Good morning dear students welcome back I am your physics professor Dr. Nagraj I have done about 12 videos on quantum computation and it was uh, there was a very good response for this uh, particular topic and it was widely accepted by, by by both teaching community as well as students community and they gave very positive feedback and also constructive suggestions and I tried to incorporate all of them in the subsequent videos and uh, some students were asking me to do the uh, videos on animation of phys physics of animation also uh, it is part of the engineering physics syllabus of course it is there for computer science and allied branches so here is the first video of, on physics of animation well I will uh, try to complete this particular topic in about four to five videos maximum of six videos as usual not more than 25 minutes duration okay and uh, afterwards even in the subsequent videos I will put the PDF notes also you can download and you can uh, uh, prepare for your examinations dear students first of all you may wonder what role physics has got in animation so is it physics of animation or physics in animation or physics for animation or physics and animation it is physics of animation it is physics for animation it is physics and animation it is everything I tell you physics is there in each and every part not only animation you, you take any anything you take e even while walking also we have physics while eating we have physics see when you see something there is physics when you do something there is physics physics is nothing but systematic understanding of nature I already uh, told about this in uh, previous videos and you people have studied more about physics at high school level pre-university level okay so there is no need of explaining the scope of physics for you okay now coming to animation what role physics has got in animation see when this syllabus was framed and when it was announced some people raised their eyebrows what actually physics got to do in animation that way there is no animation without physics if I ask me there is no animation without physics see animators sometimes they break the rules of physics just for the sake of comedy purpose or to exaggerate the things they break the rules but finally they also have to abide by rules and regulations of the physics because these rules are not man-made rules they are nature-made rules okay so you cannot go away without physics at all well coming back to animation and uh, definition and how physics uh, is playing a role in animation I would like to explain one by one first of all outline of the syllabus in this chapter uh, a particular module we have to start with taxonomy of physics in animation and then what is called frame frames rate or frames per second and then size and scale and then motion in motion different types of motion and then what is called timing timing and the spacing so like this these are all the subheadings what I am mentioning afterwards there is a rule called odd rule odd rule multiplier and two events jumping event and walking event all these things we have to discuss one by one well I will try my level best to make the things as simple as possible I will try to convince you please feel free and give me your feedback okay having said this much let us move on to animation definition see that way animation is not a very new thing it is an age-old concept age-old concept but only thing is uh, it is called by animation it was not called by this name animation okay in our ancient times also you might have heard of puppet show puppet show is nothing but animation only okay well coming to definition of animation uh, before coming to definition of animation I would like to give one simple example you might have seen that uh, famous movie popular movie not famous popular movie Tare Zameen Par. There that boy uh, he used to write draw, no, diagram in his notebook and he run the pages. Uh, when he runs the pages, that image appears to be moving. I, may, I, I hope you all saw, seen this movie. It is best example for animation. See nowadays almost all the movies will be having animation one way or other whether it is Hollywood movie or Indian movies whether it is Kannada movie or Hindi movie or any other language movies you take one way or other there will be animation only okay so in fact animation makes a lot of weight difference lots of difference in the movie well what is this animation in a broader sense I can say animation is nothing but motional effect of the image that's all 
motional effect of the image first we draw the images okay and then we put them in a order and then we take the photograph of each at every image and then we run the photographs in sequence okay say for example i draw one person image like this right so assume that he is going from here to here i want him to move from here to here what to do i write one image here i take the photograph and then i write one more image here i take the photograph like this like this like this and finally i put the right image like this this way so and then when you run the photos continuously in order you feel that the person is moving from a to b this is motional effect so motional effect produced by moving the images that is nothing but image you know that is nothing but animation animation totally motional effect that's all right so when it comes to motional effect it can be movement of the object or it can be motion of the person or it can be movement of the leaves or it can be flow of water see the world is full of motion it can be butterfly moving around or it can be motion of the cricket ball or train running aeroplane flying bus run moving car moving or a person walking okay cricket ball when you hit it moves the world is full of motion only and when you depict these motions in order it is going to create what is called motional effect visual effect okay so animation i tell you is a fake it is a fake it is not a real actor acting on real screen okay it is uh, what is called graphic graphic and then producing illusions right in olden days animation was done by drawing the images on transparent sheets called celluloid sheets celluloid sheets and then taking the photograph of those sheets and running them one by one you all are familiar with the tom and jerry or mickey and donald right all these are comic you know comics or uh, cartoons you can call them as cartoons they are done like this only on this basis only but nowadays it has been replaced the traditional method of drawing the images on the transparent sheet has been replaced by computer graphic imagery so cgi is doing the role of that uh, celluloid sheet okay so now animation technique has grown into a billion dollars of industry right now in animation what physics has got what is the role of physics we shall try to understand one by one see already i told you animation is nothing but motional effect motion is integral part of animation okay and in physics when it comes to motion movement we have two categories so now i will talk about what is called taxonomy taxonomy means a classification that's all taxonomy me means classification taxonomy of physics in animation see we have mainly two categories number 1 kinematics kinematics is a familiar word all of you have studied this in first pc itself and uh, second one is dynamics even this one also you studied in puc even nowadays they teach this in high school what is kinematics and dynamics i tell you kinematics is study of motion without uh, touching the cause for the motion what actually causes the motion we won't consider we consider only distance travel velocity initial velocity final velocity acceleration retardation time taken etc etc only the movement of the body displacement distance etc we consider only the motion of the body trajectory of the body not the cause of the motion in the kinematics we have those uh, famous equations like s is equal to ut plus half at square uh, that is nothing but equations of motion or v square is equal to u square plus 2 as or v is equal to u plus at okay all these equations comes in kinematics so what is kinematics it is study of motion without touching or without considering the cause for the motion so here only we come across with the distance velocity time displacement acceleration etc that's all when it comes to dynamics we not only consider the parameters like distance displacement velocity etc we also consider mass momentum kinetic energy work done etc 
etcetera etcetera that means force force everything we consider that means in dynamics we consider not only the motion of the body also cause for the motion what causes the movement of the body so kinematics is the study of motion of the body kinematics is only about the motion dynamics is the study of cause for the motion of the body so well in dynamics we come across with what is called newton's laws of motion why a body continues to be in the state of rest why a body cannot be stopped on its own or what is the relation between force and acceleration okay conservation of momentum all these things part and parcel of dynamics i hope you know all these things so kinematics is the study of motion of the body without considering the cause for the motion dynamics is the study of motion of the body by considering the cause for the motion here we come across with the equations of motion here we come across with the laws of motion like newton's first law second law third law law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of energy etc okay so this is first classification remember in both the type that is either in kinematics or dynamics we have two more subdivisions namely forward forward and then reverse or backward forward and backward motion forward and backward i will explain first i take up backward or reverse it is also called as reverse reverse motion what is this reverse motion if a body knows its initial and final position a body starts from here go somewhere else and comes back to the starting point then that motion is called backward motion or reverse motion so that part or that object or that character see in this chapter i use the word character it may be a person moving or it may be a butterfly moving or it may be a ball moving or it may be a part of the machinery moving everything i consider as character because i am animating that character okay if the character knows its starting point and ending point then its movement is called as backward or reverse okay suppose if the character does not know it's a destiny it knows only how to go ahead only starting point it's no not the end point then the motion is called forward got it like for example i throw a stone so i release the stone here this is the starting point we don't know where it is going it may fall here only or there only or there only it all depends upon how much acceleration or how much force you are giving how much momentum it gains or how much opposition it face in the medium okay finally it will fall somewhere else this is forward motion this is forward motion now you take the stone tie one thread to it and whirl around you it goes around and comes back it is backward motion that means it goes from here comes back to the starting point okay so this is about backward motion and forward motion one one more example i will take so let us say there is a robot okay robot roughly looks like this these are the joints right so here i have a joint here i have a joint okay one more thing and some something here so let us say a robot looks like this right i call this as joints right uh, joints right so and this i call as end effect end effect now you switch on the robot uh, and set the robot in action so how it will move how it will move so it moves like this it moves like this so this portion finally comes somewhere here so this is the next position of the end effect so and uh, this will be something like this something like this something like this got it ah now you follow carefully end effector was here now here this was the starting point and it is moving only forward it won't come back at all so when you switch on robot let us say robot takes the object right and then moves and then put it somewhere there so end effector is going from here to there in order to move the end effector from here to there these joints has to move no let us say my hand my hand these fingers are end effector right and my move i move the hand somewhere here i take some object right and then i put it somewhere here 
right so for moving this these joints has to work no same way this joint is working so joint is moving like this joint is moving like this this is backward motion so this joint movement is backward motion end effector movement is frontward or forward motion so this way we have classification while while animating animator has to consider all of them carefully if he makes animation such a way that joint also will have forward motion only then it won't give any pleasing effect it won't give any effect at all because we know robot moves this way okay so it has to rotate the it, it has to see my i know my hand is moving like this my hand is moving like this suppose if i animate this portion moving frontward and this is rotating it won't give any realistic effect at all in order to produce a realistic effect you should not break the rules of physics right so here comes the physics here comes the physics so if you ask where is physics it is here okay while animating you should not violate the rules of physics you should not break the rules of the physics in the movement of this body we have two types of movements one is reverse movement one is forward movement so which part is forward movement accordingly you have to animate which part is reverse movement accordingly you have to animate so i hope you got it so this is first uh, point where you come across physics in animation so i repeat taxonomy means classification or division physics so motion of the physics kinematics and dynamics See, i tell you animator should have solid knowledge of physics especially mechanics and biomechanics okay so then only he can produce very good animated movies animation will be very effective very 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 close to the reality otherwise it won't produce any reality at all okay i will keep on giving the examples like this in my subsequent discussions so first tax or classification kinematics and dynamics kinematics is about the study of motion without touching the uh, reason for the motion dynamics is about study of motion by considering cause for the motion here come across with the equations of motion here comes loss of motion and in both of them we have two types forward and backward forward means front destination is this decided means the object destiny is decided the movement is only in one direction whereas in backward the point will be object will be coming back character will be coming back it knows its starting point and end point it know where to come after the movement so best example in robot end effector that means the handle or the grip or the front part is called end effector it moves only in front direction or one direction whereas the joints will be having a backward direction okay so this is one thing next thing is scale scale and size this is very important for an animator you all know what is scale you might have done physics lab experiments there you might have done some graphical calculations say for example temperature versus resistance or resistance versus temperature current versus voltage or magnetic field versus distance when you plot you choose some scale along y axis some scale along x axis like 1 cm is equal to 5 kelvin or 1 cm is equal equal to 2.1 ohm or some something like that so you choose a scale and accordingly you plot because scaling is required in order to fit the entire value in that small graph sheet okay so in the graph you are showing how the parameters are varying with respect to one another so that is scaling same almost same meaning we carry even here also see dear students animation is not restricted to any particular object or any particular size you already saw so many movies both bollywood and hollywood movies you have seen animations also you have seen there you see the animation of small objects as well as very big objects for example river dam okay or cricket stadium or dinosaurs or train or aeroplane that i have to animate right they are all very big big objects on the other hand i have to animate my body parts let us say blood cell i have to animate or small insects i have to animate right so long back one movie came its name was i think uh, ani i shrunk the kids in that movie there was a small insect okay they very small insect they have animated that small insect and they have magnified it so that the audience or the observer can feel the effect of that 
insect right so you need to animate both bigger objects as well as as well as smaller objects so while animating object you have to keep scale and size in mind the scaling is very important while scaling the object it is not only dimension not only dimension not only size many other things matters many other things like size or energy or strength or weight or age all these things comes into picture for example i want to animate cat right if you animate cat the size you have to reduce or you have to scale the size of the cat so okay you scale the you see see this diagram here you have two diagrams in one diagram i have scaled the cat right along with its kitten so when you are scaling the kitten when you are animating the kitten you have to animate it very carefully because kitten and cat are not same they may be belonging to same family but kitten and cat are not same in terms of appearance in terms of energy in terms of weight in terms of movement if cat runs fast kitten cannot run so fast it has to move slowly so you have to keep physics in mind while scaling the kitten and cat suppose if you reduce only size then kitten looks like another cat only adult cat only in smaller size that is not correct so if you reduce only size of the cat and uh, you call it as kitten people will not accept so kitten and cat they know see there are this see when you want to animate something first of all you have to observe the real world you have to observe real cat and real kitten when cat and kitten are moving you check how the kitten is moving whether it is running same to same with cat or we are running with same speed with cat no it runs more slowly and whether its muscles are of same size no so first animator must have all these observations carefully according accordingly he has to go for scaling and then reducing the size and then animating why i am telling you know see when you reduce the size or when you increase the size not volume and area increase in the same proportionate so definitely they won't increase in the same proportionate or decrease in the same proportionate for example i have a cube i have a cube of dimension 1 meter 1 meter right so here we said 1 meter so that initial volume is 1 meter cube initial surface area any one surface area is 1 meter square okay na now i will expand <laughs> expand this i will uh, increase that size of the cube i increase uh, full just i pull the cube i make it this much big this side double this side double okay this side double so full double 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 like this right so now the side length is 2 meter come and tell me what is the new volume new volume will be 2 cube that is 8 but what about the area it is 2 square 4 keep it in mind volume always increases with the cube while the area increases with the square it is not only true for cube not only true for cuboid it is true for even any other three dimensional body so when you scale the body when you increase the size volume and area never increase in the same proportionate if that were to be the case okay so same proportionate 1 1 here it should be 8 8 or 4 4 or 2 2 like that no volume is increasing more than area see in our case our body strength body strength is very important and i want to animate a person i want to animate a person character so my weight depends upon the volume weight depends on the volume my body volume and muscle strength depends upon the area so therefore you have to be very careful if you simply increase the volume there will be no proportionate appearance in the structure of the body weight may be heavy muscles will be very weak okay suppose if you increase only muscle strength by increasing the area weight will not be proportionate so the person will not look like a, a real person so animation becomes a laughing stock there so therefore scale and size are very important in animation so don't you think it is a physics yes sir it is physics only so volume decides the weight of the body area decides the muscle strength of the body when it is muscle strength of the body not only human beings even kitten also even animals also so while animating the animal 
character you have to keep all these things in mind so you have to be very careful while increasing the area reducing the area or increasing the volume reducing the volume so this is about scale and size right so scale and size is another parameter first one classification next one scale and size so having said this now we will move on to next parameter what is called uh, move, movement of the body motion of the body types of the motion and after types of motion we will come to what is called uh, uh, timing types of motion and then timing but before that very important point which i already mentioned here it is nothing but frame 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 rate frames per second that i will explain now what is frames and then what is this frame rate or frame per second coming back to this example i draw one image here okay so this is one frame right in next frame i write the image somewhere here right in the sorry next i write the image somewhere here so each diagram is a frame each diagram is frame so if you look at this right in initially image was okay let me attach one coordinate system image is at origin in the next case image image is about 1 meter away from the origin in next case image is about 2 meter away from the origin so if i run the frames continuously you feel that image is moving from point to point so what is frame frame is nothing but image each image is a frame how close these images are how far apart these images are that is secondary thing but first of all to create visual effect after all animation is visual effect only to create visual effect you have to draw the images either you draw by hand or you produce it using computer graphics or do whatever you want i told you know the tare zameen par that boy who used to draw the images by hand only you can do you might have done this when you are in school primary school or high school okay you just put a dot at each page okay in in each page but not at the same place so in each page you move it by let us say 1 cm or 2 cm or 0.5 cm now you run all the pages in faster rate you feel that the dot is moving like this or dot is moving like this okay so there each dot or each page is nothing but frame so how do you define frame frame is nothing but individual image and these images or these frames when displayed in sequence it produces motional effect that's all so frame is image individual image that's all and when these frames are run displayed or produced in sequence at certain rate then it produces motional effect at what rate we have to produce dear students remember our eyes are sensitive and retain the image for about 0.1 second that way in 1 second our image can retain about 10 to 12 images so if you run 12 images if you run 12 images in 1 second we feel that the object is moving we feel that object is moving so how many frames you have per second whether you have one frame or two frames or 10 frames or 20 frames or 30 frames how many frames you run in one second that is known as frame rate it is also called as frame per second so number of frames definition definition number of frames displayed in one second to produce a smooth moving effect is known as frame rate one second alli eshtu frames anna run maartira how many frames you run in one second to produce smooth visual effect is known as frame rate or frames per second i said just now 12 so if you have run 12 frames in one second okay we feel that there is a movement but definitely it is not a smooth movement for smooth movement we have to increase the frame rate see if the frames are only 12 per second then the movement appears to be choppy hmm? you know it moves in installment please try to recall old black and white movies charlie chaplin movies so there he moves with the you know breaks small breaks it's not a continuous movement earlier in the 
golden movie, old movies like City Light and other things, Charlie Chaplin, even in uh, uh, Indian movies also black and white, movements were not so smooth because the frame rate was very less, about 10 to 12. Now it has been increased at present 24 frames per second produces a smooth moving effect. Okay, smooth as if the body is moving without any break, without any installment, without any disruption the body is moving. So to feel that 24 frames must be displayed. Okay, for TV movies, this is for cinema or film, for TV, television broadcasting, television scenarios, it is better to have 30 frames per second. Of course, different video formats have got different frames per rate or frames per second, but by and large, almost everywhere, it, this is accepted. 24 frames for film, 30 frames for TV, accepted they produce smooth visual or smooth moving effect. So this is about the frame and frame rate. I repeat, frame is nothing but individual image and when these frames or these images are run in, sub, in, in sequence, a visual effect is produced. For better visual effect, for better moving effect, frame per second, number of frames per second should be 24 or 30. If it is less than that, the motion appears to be choppy in installment, break, break type, it, it appears like a breaking movement. Okay, so this is about frames per second. Having said this, I stop my discussion here. So today I just gave introduction to animation, taxonomy, two different types of movements like forward and backward and something about importance of scale and size and something about frame rate and frame per second. I hope you are enjoying my videos. I hope you are able to understand this explanation. Feel free, put your comments. I will uh, rectify it so that I will improvise the video, subsequent videos. Okay. So your satisfaction is my satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you very much.